we are back with another video guys welcome back to another video um so i'm back i'm back to dr Anne. like i say man shout out to this doctor this is one of the first few doctors especially from south africa who started sharing a lot of information right so there is another video that i just saw and she talks about something important like you know that in south africa we are currently facing um the struggle now you find that doctors are scrambling for jobs right you find that unemployed doctors so now you're talking about steps on how you can work as a doctor in canada so to those that maybe who might think i need to leave this country because we are not we can't find jobs it's actually sad man that it's actually sad that we have our professionals have to now <laughs> start really finding ways and thinking of ways to live in our country and going to 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 another country to practice their med their medicine there as it is actually sad man it is actually sad hence i'm saying that it is important now especially that as future professionals that we get involved into the politics of this country you know and and have a say right uh, a lot of things are happening where we are not we are not getting involved and and I think sometimes we are suffering the consequences of that. But anyway, let me focus on this video. Uh, let's remain positive. So, here we go. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I am Dr. Anne and you already know what it is. I hope nice you guys are part. doing well, man. Like, I hope you are good. Instead of asking you for you to make sure that you are subscribed to this channel, I would just like to take this opportunity um, to just uh, thank everyone for having subscribed, for liking the videos, for commenting, for sharing. I really, really do appreciate it. And yeah, we're seeing the numbers growing. Hashtag road to 4K. What is up? So yeah, I'm really excited about that. And I just thank you guys and I appreciate that. The main objective basically was just to create a community where you can ask questions and um, you know, to just give you access to someone who's already, you know, in the field. This is relevant to the high school kid who's not thinking about doing medicine or going to medicine as a career. It's also relevant to the medical student um, in who is, you know, has chosen to undertake the whole journey of, you know, getting into the medical field. I don't know, just like a big sister, you can ask all the questions that you deem stupid regarding where you want to be in the future or where you actually see yourself or the things that are actually done or how the field actually is like. Personally, when I decided to do medicine, I didn't know much so basically this is so that you sort of get an overview of how the field is like and you know are able to see some of the challenges that come with having to do the, to get into the field especially in south africa especially at this point in time because there's a lot there's a lot it's not only that like the glitz and the glam there's a there's a, a very challenging side to it there's the disadvantage side to it there's the lack of job security side to it which is where we currently are in south africa when it comes to the field so it's just you know guys so that didn't be aware you know i wish i wish i had someone to do this when i was in high school so that i i, I go into into it you know well informed you know with a, at least an idea of, of how it was gonna be like i don't know i just i just hope that i'm that person you know for you okay Today I'm, I'm doing a well requested video um i'm addressing uh something a lot of people have been asking about which is how to become a practicing physician in canada from south africa or moving from south africa okay so guys like you know i wanted to drop this video a while ago it's just oh yes <laughs> oh welcome be like I understand, but Kanjani, like people are just weird when it comes to actually providing information regarding certain things, be it you know going to island. Even I think guys like so so apply as you tell me seven ziabo, and I'm just like welcome Like there's room for everyone. It's just people tend to conceal a lot of the information when it comes to certain things, when it comes to joining certain fields, and I'm just like Kanjani, like why would you do that? Like how are you benefiting from that do you want to be the only person who's ever gone to this particular place guys like it's just been a struggle especially when it comes to certain topics like that i actually am interested in i don't know what it is it's just yeah what's java said about black people anyways um oh dr wanibi was kind enough to i think i had him for the coming to south africa video especially for coming to south africa from like um after some of the african countries so he was kind enough to help me research when it comes to this topic um he actually eventually wrote the exam and did everything he's just i don't know why he's still in south africa <laughs> i 
I, I don't know. He wrote and passed the exam. So at least he was able to give me information. Unfortunately, I couldn't get anyone who, you know, eventually went on to work there. So I wasn't able to ask, like, questions of visas and etc. But from my understanding is that um, basically the whole website or the whole, like, um, the whole medical council of, of Canada is able to assist you with that. So basically the hardest part is just, you know, what I'm, I'll be giving you guys or the information that I'll be giving you guys today. Okay. I'll just be giving you a whole stepwise approach on how to apply in order for you to become a physician in Canada. If you are someone who went there or you have more information pertaining to this, please link it down below. Please comment. Great your girl. The nice thing about Canada is the whole organization. I guess it's first world things, you know. Uh, the Medical Council of Canada does things in a very well coordinated and very well organized way the whole system is electronical and basically the website that you have to visit is physicians.ca website which i'll link down below in the description bar physicians.ca is um is basically an online portal centralized system that is used to gather all important documents that you have to 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 have when applying to become a physician in canada basically the nice thing about the system is is that it also allows you to register for to write for the, to write the canadian board examination when you're coming from an external country it also um allows you to also register to get you know your your a formal qualification after the examination which is the lmcc you can't consider moving to canada when you haven't completed your internship because it is a requirement so in south africa internship is over two years and you have to have rotated through the various departments which are the major departments that's the main requirement other than that anything extra courses diplomas etc are not really important if you have decided that this is something that you want to do step number one go to the website physicians.ca right go into the website and create an account so creating an account um requires you to pay money unfortunately this whole process guys like i honestly didn't know that it required this much money or just money in general for you to actually do everything be it the exams the whole process obviously because it's a website that has to be maintained that's storing your document that's linking you to to the you know medical council of canada you have to pay unfortunately to set up an account um costs around 310 canadian dollars in rands that almost equates up to maybe 4200 so rand. basically hey can can we check how much that is now <laughs> the 310 Canadian uh, It's about four point three thousand after creating an account um, you have to get your documents in order. So the documents that are required of you, it's basically your medical degree, your MBCHB, MBS, MBBCA. Um, they also want your internship certificate. If you don't have it, you can call the HBCSA and ask them to email it to you. I don't know if you can actually go on the website and download it. The third thing is basically your transcript, which is what you will get from your university, which is what you got when you were graduating. Um, if you've lost it, you can ask your respective university to print it out for you. It basically has... The marks that you got or the breakdown of your academic you know record basically throughout medical school so the fourth thing that's of importance is basically your license which is given to you by the health professions council of sa after you have completed internship that is the the one basically the certificate that has your mp number so unfortunately this one would not have that independent medical practitioner certificate because at this point in time you will have not have completed or done your comserv the last thing that you can put on there that's of importance is your postgraduate training. So this is your diplomas, your other degrees that you have done. I know there's people who maybe transitioned from other degrees and have honors and whatnot. So those are the degrees that you would put on there. I am not talking about your ACLS certificates. There's documents that they just don't want or, or they, ju they just don't care for. And those are things like your ACLS, VLS, all those things, they don't care for them. The only things that really matter are diplomas, degrees. And if you are already a specialist, um, you're basically your specialist training um, from, from the Colleges of Medicine South Africa. So basically your FCP things. After having your documents ready and certified and etc., you then upload them onto the system. So it costs 220 um, Canadian dollars to upload 
a document. Mm-hmm. Hey guys, pull it, pull it. 220 um 220 canadian dollars to load a document which equals around 3k per document at this point we're looking at plus minus 12,000 rand yeah. to upload the necessary documents after having uploaded your documents um they take about a week to say to you that yes they have received your documents they basically go through these documents they look for any errors if there are any errors they send them back to you for you to upload again and then uh, basically until there's no errors and your documents are all like proper and what they ask for they're cancelled and forwards your document to ecfmg um and ecfmg takes about the whole process takes about 10 days ecfmg runs a whole process where they send your documents to their respective universities for them to actually verify that yes you were a student there yes you did this respective course yes you you know you have done that once the university verifies the university send confirmation back to ecfmg um, and then basically the whole, the two bodies which is the council as well as ecfmg then um confirm or verify your documents essentially so then after having been verified the next step is for you to plan to write the exam so basically the board exam or the qualifying exam is important Mm. and is a prerequisite in for you to actually move and go work in canada so there's two examinations that are available for you to actually write you have up to three chances to write it and you can't write it like consecutively i think that you have to skip and then you know skip one exam and then write the next there's um four exams in a year so they give you four dates in a year to pick from in order for you to write these examinations the exam is made out of two components which is the mcqs as well as the short answer clinical scenarios around 210 mcqs guys imagine <laughs> imagine like when i was doing the whole diploma we wrote i think a hundred and something mcqs one day the next day also like 70 something guys i was up to here like (laughs) i wanted to vomit it was just damn too damn much so it's the 210 mcqs as well as the 38 sacks you write these examinations in your country the price to write these qualifying examinations 1375 canadian dollars which is approximately rounded off 19000 rand Oof. 19000 <laughs> south african rands like imagine if you fail <laughs> imagine if you fail go be go be guys go tense yeah. like you have to be serious about this when you are planning to do it because the amount of money that's involved in all of this is a lot but i feel like it's money that you can save up during internship so if it's something that you're really serious about you have to literally save half of your salary every month during internship and that's very possible especially if you stay in dq if you are interested in also doing residency or specializing in canada you also have to write the nac it's really short for national assessment collaboration so if you're planning on specializing then you have to write the nacs unfortunately with these ones you can only write them in canada so i think personally for me you have to think about it would you rather write the nacs when you're already working there or would you want to sort of kind of you know spend money and you know travel to canada find a place to stay in canada so that you're able to write this oski I don't know it's up to you it's basically an oski examination and you also have to pass it it's also made out of pass and fail stations mainly emergency medicine stations you are allowed to write the examination three times unfortunately with this examination it's only available or it's only written twice a year so there's two dates that are given in a year there's basically clinical scenarios regarding the major specialties that's that's medicine that's peds or obs and gyne which is things that you will have rotated in during internship so peds ong uh, family medicine they also say like um is does a public health i think as well as like psychiatry they also take family medicine really seriously so a lot of people will say that it's it's mainly like in like family medicine that that whole exam cost three thousand and fifty canadian dollars which equates to round it off forty two thousand south african rand that is ridiculous guys like you can't fail yeah. like you, you cannot fail <laughs> You literally cannot fail this exam like it's not it's not acceptable for you to waste this amount of money and fail. Yeah. Huh? imagine 42k after having paid almost 20k for the for the qualifying examination which is the computer based one you are uh, guys who, who lead and then after having done your examinations the nice thing about this portal is that your things stay in the system your results your everything feedback everything stays on the on the whole system you then apply for lmcc which is basically the licentiate of the medical council of canada 
it's basically it's not a license but it's it's a qualification. The price of the LMCC is um 250 Canadian dollars. It's plus minus 3400 rand, you know. So yeah, you then apply for that and once LS you get your your LMCC certificate, it's only then that you are able to apply to get a license. So if we are looking at all these figures, mm. you know, rounding them off and up is a lot. Says so like guys the whole process without you applying for the the residency exam or writing the the NAC or residency type exam it costs about like almost forty thousand and if you want isn't those you know things of residency and you want to have to go there having written the NACs so that is plus minus 80k excluding the fact that you have to pay for things like flight tickets to Canada mm you know you know accommodation so you know be a man's like plus minus a hundred and something k if you're gonna write the nacs so maybe um zibale when you're ready that side personally because at least that'll be cheaper also you will be earning a salary there that is a lot of money because technically like the rand is weak compared to the to the canadian dollar so then everything is sort of like kind of expensive. So maybe it would be cheaper and more affordable for you to write it when you're ready that side and thinking of specializing when you're ready that side. Okay. So after having your license, you will um, then um, pick the province, the provinces where you would like work. When there's posts, they send out, you know, application forms um, or your details to the specific, you know, hospitals the hospitals are able to you know view your profile and everything and then they take it from there once they say yes you have the job or have an interview with you you then um are able to to then go and work in canada so the whole process where to is i think it's very easy and very convenient because everything is online so apparently they also assist with you know um, the process of you moving or relocating there. I think the nice thing about first world countries, guys, is that everything is organized and everything is in order. The nice thing about working in Canada, I've heard from like some of the people that I've come across in life, is that you get paid a lot more. Um, I heard that they also place doctors in one of these like small towns, rural, rural type, uh, rural type, you know, towns. So you won't really like you're not really likely to get placed in like cities like um you know toronto etc but rather the smaller nyana smaller nyana towns in the outskirts that's what i heard um if you know anything about this please verify um i also heard that yes you get paid a lot like some people will go there especially if they're in debt or especially if they want to like get a head start when it comes to finances they go to canada literally apparently two years worth of work is more than enough <laughs> it is more than enough money that you'll ever make in 10 years in south africa so that's the nice thing about it um also with the way things are happening with the crime with the everything i mean it can make a girl consider like you know her options because yay guys rough like with politics and you know what's happening especially in african countries unzima with the corruption some of our countries in south africa is the better it's not the better one like you know what i mean but in terms of like management and and everything i feel like it's also like in terms of the standard is going down the corruption is just becoming way too much the crime is becoming way too much people are unemployed and therefore the crime levels are skyrocketing um Kat um so uh shout out shout out shout out to uh, shout out to this great doctor, man. Shout out to Dr. Anne. Like I said, man, this is one doctor who has been giving us information, right? A lot of information. Uh, yo, shout out. Uh, I don't think I'll, I'll even be able to cover all that she shares on my channel alone. So if you might have the time, you can go share it. So, uh, it does sound interesting. Like, it, it does sound exciting at the same time. Right? So this is the first time I'm actually exposed to how you're going to make it how you can go be a physician in Canada. It sounds scary, it sounds expensive, but it sounds really um, interesting. So while she was speaking, I was I was searching the, the pay that side, right? The pay that side. Um, and they were showing us that the average pay for a doctor in Canada is about $106,234. 106, per year. I don't know why they, they like 
they like uh, telling us the amount per year, right? But then uh, I converted it into rand and then I converted it in uh, how you get earned, per, how much you get per month. So per year is about 1.2 million. <laughs> The year is about one point oh sorry one point nine million so it's one point nine million yo it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a big figure one point nine billion and if you divide it uh in South African rands per month it's about a hundred and sixty uh it's hundred and sixty thousand almost close to hundred and seventy thousand rand per month that you get the average fee of a doctor uh in Canada it sounds great um it, it does sound exciting, it does sound expensive. And I think such info is very important, especially if you're still in your earlier years of medicine, uh, even in high school, or even are still doing uh, medicine or in the early years of practicing, man. That if should you want to make that decision, you could do that, start studying earlier, start preparing earlier. It, it, it sounds very exciting, I don't wanna lie. It's the first time I heard about it. It's not the first time I heard about it, it's the first time I get information about it. And the more I think about it, it excites me a lot. So one of the things I want to discuss next that I've gotten in this video, right, is diplomas. I've been hearing a lot of talk about diplomas, right? I want to get into diplomas. What are they actually for? When do you get them? What do they mean? Number two, I want to talk about residency and fellowships and all of those things, right? So these are terms that um, you hear a lot in medicine. So we're going to get down into what does each mean and we're going to take it from there. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you like, share, subscribe. Um, hope you also check out Dr. Adam, especially as a person who is really interested in medicine. Check out her channel. It has a lot of information. Have a good day.